refuse to answer on the grounds of self-incrimination? Mr. Hilton, every question you've been asked here this morning, you've pleaded the Fifth Amendment. Now, just how long do you think you can go on doing it? My lawyers say forever. Hilton, as a union president, you make $50,000 a year. Yet, you live in a house worth a half a million. How? That was a gift. Who from? I refuse to answer on the grounds of... Self-incrimination. Listen, Hilton, I know you're tied in with the syndicate. You're using your union presidency for industrial blackmail and extortion. You've made yourself a millionaire out of other men's bankruptcies. Just what was the question, Well, Senator? is what I'm saying true or isn't it? I refuse to answer on the grounds of self-incrimination. All right, Hilden, let's see how you like my next question. What makes you think the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution was designed to protect you, an Australian? Because I've been here 40 years. And never taken citizenship. I just, what, what is this? It's the beginning of deportation proceedings, Hilden. Well, of course, and you won't get away with this. That's contempt. But my lawyers get hold of that, Robert. Save it for your hometown, Hilden. Save it for Sydney. months ago, five months ago, four, three, two, one. Well. Inspector, by the way this cardboard's faded, I'd say you've been keeping these clippings for quite a time. Which means you're expecting something. Hillen wasn't just a union man, he was in big crime, infiltrating unions and putting the squeeze on the industries. Another variation of the protection racket. It was more than that, you can include organized pillage and hijacking. Which brings it into our area. Right. I'm being pushed for results, which means going faster than I want to. Well, how far can we push a man like Hilton? Well, do your homework. Anything apart from these? They could be at any moment. I got a man planted with the mob. <laughs> Mr. Giggs in a hospital. They use this to warn him off. A rough sort of warning. They're rough people. No one on the wharf saw anything. I can imagine why. I want Hilden out of action. I doubt if Hilden ever killed anybody. Not personally, perhaps, but he's responsible. You know what I want. Well, how do we play this one? I'll go back to the hospital. You check the wharf again. You cover Hilden's office. I want to know who goes to see him and who he goes to see. I was expecting Madigan. Do you know where he is? Mm, well, Larry said that it... Larry? Uh, I mean, Mr. Madigan said... That's better. I don't get pulled in by this highfalutin charm of his, Dale. He's no good. He seems very nice. Yes, well, he's, what do you kids say? Kinky. You mean like queer? Like no, a... no, not like a puff. He's, uh... Odd. Anyway, keep it strictly business. Nice girl like you. Who the hell can he be? Well, he said he... Yeah? He said that after it finished, he was going to have a look at some antique crystals. After it finished what? I don't know. He just said after it finished. Do you know where he is now? Mm hmm Jeff Gray's Castle Ray Street. Thank you.
I want it for you and yours. Who's that? I don't know who the other one is, but the slim one is Lawrence Madigan. He's a collector. What's he collect? Firearms, old one. Did you see him at all the auction? He'll pay a top price for a good piece. Now, Madigan, I don't like coming across town to see an employee. Don't keep me waiting, Madigan. You were to do something about that leak this morning. It's closed. Hilton met a man called Lawrence Madigan. They were together in a sale room looking at antique guns. Hilton stood out like you two in a beauty salon. Where's he standing out now? I told you to cover Hilton. I came back to report what happened. Next time, use the telephone. Save your feet and my time. We could have run a check on Madigan by now. Yes, Sergeant. Antique guns. Find out all you can about Madigan. Exercise. It's lovely. <laughs> Hard. Hard and cold like you. <laughs> Stick them up. Madigan. Do you have to ring so early? Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I'll be there then. Your boss. He doesn't know I'm here, does he? Relax. He wants to see me on business. Oh. The end of my job, if he did. <laughs> does it concern him what you're doing when you're not working? No. As long as I don't do it with you. Yeah. Like that, is it? He cares. I like him for it. <laughs> He's nice. What does he want with you? Business. What sort of business? What do you really do for a living? I told you I'm an investor. <laughs> well, what's that got to do with Mr. Hilden? He's an investor too. <laughs> You're a liar. I'll drive you into the office. Mm. In that case, I don't have to hurry. Mm. I think I do love you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's nothing on Mannequin. Doesn't have a job. The boys in the vice court who were looking at him at one time thought he might have been running girls. But he's clean of that anyway. But he does have money and he runs a vintage car. Anything to show where the money comes from? Well, there's a story he picked up a lot as a mercenary in the Congo, but that's only a story. His family may have had money. He went to a pricey school, proper little gentleman. Not if he mixes with Hilton. I've got a job. We've already got one. I want you to link in with special branch on this one. There's an American politician coming out. Do you want us to work on Hilton or not? If we're going the to be looking after... The name's Thorson. Senator Richard Thorson. The man who had Hilton deported. That's the one. He arrives at 48 hours. And you'll arrange for the girl. Any preferences? Blonde, redhead? Who cares? I'll ship a girl in from Melbourne. That way we won't be connected. Will there be enough time for that? He gets here Saturday. That gives me 48 hours. It'll all be arranged by the time Thorson arrives. <laughs>
go. Kelly, this is Bill Jamison. You got the money? Oh, Mr. Jamison, that's why I'm here. Good. Look, I'm tied up till after midday, but we can meet for lunch. Do you know the pier at Watson's Bay? Oh, I can find it. You can call a cab. Um, meet me there at one o'clock. There'll be a table booked in my name. All right, I'll be there at one on the dot. I'll be waiting. So you're Bill Jamison now? That was business. <laughs> but it was another woman. When will I see you again? I'll phone your apartment tonight. <laughs> tonight? Oh, don't be silly about it, Dale. It's only a business lunch. I hope so. I won't lose you so easily. Is going to be hell to pay about this? Somebody's pelt's going to be nailed to the wall? Not Gamble's. His job was only to escort him as far as the hotel. They must have planned this shooting as soon as they knew Thorson was coming here. By there you mean Hilden? I'd be guessing if I said that. You'd be guessing right. I've sent Gamble to pull him in. It still remains to be proved, John. The bullet must have been fired from that building across the street. You've covered it. Yeah, I've got two men working in there now. I can narrow it down for you. Oh, well, that would be a great help, Miss Russell. How? 
One shot came through the glass, just a few cracks. The hole's almost circular, and the force of impact concentrated on one side. And that kind of hole can only be achieved by a high-velocity projectile. A bullet from a powerful gun? Fired at an angle. Tell that from the cracks. Through the window in this direction, at uh, that angle. See for yourself. In my opinion, the shot was fired from one of four windows in that building opposite. Probably the window that's still open. Listen, if you're Mr. Jamison, I've got a few My name is Mr. Jamison. Have you just closed this window? Yes, why? In here, Mr. Russell. A senator from America was murdered this afternoon. Yes, I heard somebody talking about it. In it the could city. have been done from this room. Would you look around, please? What's your name? Kelly Lawson. That's in the register. Is it for real? No, it's a professional name. Professional what? All right. Just don't give me any trouble. Where were you at a quarter past one? I was being stood up, if you must know. I was waiting at Watson's Bay for Mr. Jamison. The man you took me for? All right, what's the story? Look, I only got in from Melbourne this morning. Mr. Jamison rang me when I got here and told me to meet him sharp at one at the pier at Watson's Bay. I left here about 22 and I sat around and I just got back. Who's Jamison? I don't know. I'll come off it, love. Look, I'm a hostess for VIPs and businessmen. You're a cool girl. Go on. Well, about two days ago, I got a letter from this... Bill Jamison and some money. Have you got the letter? I burnt it. Do you usually burn your letters? It's said to. Didn't that make you suspicious? Men have wives. The letter said to come to Sydney and the room would be booked and here I am. You get jobs like this through the post, is that usual? What's usual? It was a lot of money. Yeah, I can imagine it was. All right, I think you're telling the truth. I'll get a statement from you later. Have you got something there, Mr. Russell? Hmm, petals. Rose petals, either a sterling silver or... Blue moon. Have you had flowers in this room, Kelly? Not me. Flowers are from boyfriends and husbands. Do you prefer hard cash? Well, I'm sorry, love. You're going to have to stay in town. Who's going to pay the hotel bill? Oh, I don't think Mr. Jamison will be visiting, so why not use his money? What? In lieu of uh, services rendered. I guess I went in to check the fingerprints. All right, Harry, I'll arrange it. You come back to the office. Mr. Condon, Sergeant. So you're Randall, eh? Yes, take a chair. Well, what do you mean by pulling me in downtown? You know where my office is. I haven't done anything. And I know my legal rights. You didn't know them too well in the States. That's why they kicked you out. Senator Thorson, the man responsible, was murdered this afternoon here in Sydney. As if you didn't know already, or sooner. I need my lawyer. Thorson was hit at 1.15 today. Where were you at the time? My lawyer will tell you. Why can't you tell me? Well, it might sound better coming from him. You see, I had lunch with him. Here's his card. Check it. Use your own phone. He'll stand up. I'm sure it will. It's part for the course with you. But you arranged the shooting. Now, you wouldn't make that accusation if there was a witness present. That's why he was sent out. My word against your word. Now I can tell you what I really think of you, Hilton. You're a complete bastard. You fixed that shooting because you're too old and clapped out to make the hit yourself. <laughs> Listen, Randall, you won't deal with me. If I throw a punch at you, you'll throw the book at me. You couldn't throw a punch at anyone. You're gone at the game. I could still take you outside this building. Hilden? That's him. He was having lunch with his lawyer. Have you checked? Gambled onto it now. Uh, my duty, sir. Detective Inspector Wilcox. Well, he was there. I can go now? Yes. And you'll arrange a car, of course. Here's ten cents. Take a bus. <laughs> Put your money away. Our expenses system wasn't designed to finance empty gestures. Since he came into the office, I've been trying to get him to do his block. He's hard. Yes. What the lawyer say? He confirmed Hilden's story. The appointment was made yesterday. Yesterday. And it just so happened that he had his lawyer's calling card in his pocket. Just in case we called him in. He expected it, he fronted it, 
And I couldn't shake him. Well, you better find someone you can shake. Because when the questions start coming in, I want the answers ready. What is it? Oh, it's all in here. A double three eight Winchester Magnum fired from a Parker Hale Safari. One shot fired. Your man's an expert killer. So I've noticed. No, what I mean is he's a professional. I mean, you don't need a Magnum of that caliber to kill a man. You could take out moderately big game with it quite satisfactorily. No, he wanted one shot home and a sure kill. What are our chances of tracing the gun? Pretty good. There aren't many of them around and the rifling leaves a distinct groove on the bullet. What about those rose petals? I'm still working on them. Intriguing. Well, we'd uh, better start inquiries to trace that gun. Yes, you fix that up with Campbell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to arrange another lookout on Hilden's office. Is that wise? You've already had one run in with him. It's better than sitting here on my butt waiting for something to happen. Hilden hires standover men and sneak gunshot experts. We question everyone who goes to his office. We might, might touch Lucky. Larry? Hello. It happened. I know. From now on in, forget me. I'll be pleased to, but there's one small item I can't forget. I'll look into that. You just keep clear. That way, we stay out. $64,000. Who owns a Parker Hale Safari? Lawrence Madigan. Get Russell from Ballistics, take him with you to Madigan's. You follow in a separate car and wait outside. If you don't make an arrest, I want to know where Madigan goes. If he goes to Hilden's office, I'll deal with him myself. License to this? Certainly, I'm a member of a pistol club. I understand you're also the owner of a Parker Hale Safari rifle. As a matter of fact, I am. Why? Oh, is that it? Mm, beautiful weapon. Yes, it is. And your savage variable scope. How do you find it? Very satisfactory. It's a very heavy hitting rifle, Mr. Madigan. What do you use it for? I go north for buffalo occasionally, and it's very good for wild pig. When did you hunt with it last? About a month ago. This weapon's been fired much more recently than that, Mr. Madigan. Of course, I put a couple of rounds through it at lunchtime. I was aligning the sights. Well, what do you want me to do? We'll take possession of the rifle. Hmm. Ah. Sterling silver. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. I want a test shot, Mr. Russell. Why don't you take it here? I've got a test range in the cellar. I'd be fascinated to see it, Mr. Madigan. Well... Stop a magnum. It's backed with macrolin. Oh, put out by Bayer in Germany. That'd stop a 375 magnum at five feet. I'd rather Mr. Russell do that.
No go. The bullet that killed Thorson wasn't fired through that rifle. I don't believe in that sort of coincidence. Thorson was hit by a bullet from an unusual rifle used by an expert. He owns a similar gun. It's just too bloody ridiculous for words. Tell him the rest of it. Rose petals from Kelly Lawson's hotel room from Madigan's house. Both sterling silver. Another coincidence. And both bearing traces of the same insecticide, though it is a common one. Nothing that'll stand up in court. No, but it does tell you where you can push a bit harder, right? Right, thank you. Just part of the service. I'll let you have a report. I'll keep checking on the other guns. Yes, she left Gamble outside Madigan's house. That's what he wanted. Oh, I'd love to put a tap on his phone. That's wishful thinking. You know the law on that one, John. It'd be terrible to give a copper an even chance with a crimp. Dial is on our way now to your flat with an envelope. It's all there. It's been a pleasure to do business with you. Now I've told her to put it in the letterbox. When it arrives, I suggest you take a holiday. Abroad. Mr. Hilton sent this. You were supposed to put it in the letterbox and run. Mr. Hilton doesn't know I have a key. You should obey orders. <laughs> oh, Larry, I've got to get back to work. Don't make it so hard, Larry. Will I see you tonight? I may not be here. I'm planning a trip north to do some hunting. Oh? That was sudden. When did you decide to go? I've been thinking about it for some time. See who it is, Dale. What if it's Mr. Hilden? Tell him you're coming away with me. Two one one seven oh one. Yes, I'll see. Are you available to take a call from New York? Yes. I'll see you later. Did you mean it when you said about me coming away with you? I said I'd see you later, on your way. Madigan, who is this? Thank you. Gamble. Madigan had a visitor. Hilden's secretary. She only stayed a few minutes. Oh, I can't wait to put that in my report to the superintendent. I don't want to pass on pressure, but they're leaning on me very hard. They want results. You know exactly what I'm trying to do. You're waiting for someone to make a move. But I'm not impressed with that as a progress report. Have you any suggestions? Well, in my book, Hilton got Madigan to commit murder. I can't prove anything, so I've got to play it by ear. Randall. Message from CRB Carr. Madigan's left his address. Detective Gamble's following. Thank you. Madigan's made a move. Just as well. I hope it's in the right direction. What the hell are you doing here? Why do you think I sent Dial to your house? You've got your money. I got a reason. Not for coming here, you haven't. I've already been pulled in on this job by a cop named Randall. You should not be here. I don't just stand there, Madigan. Get going. I had a call from New York. From New York? I'm home. Guess. The family were very upset you didn't check with them about yesterday. So I didn't check. Why? Oh, they had a nice little lever on Thorson. They didn't want to use it yet, because he could have made it all the way to the White House. And what did you do? You really fouled it up. Yes, but you did it. I mean, if they want anyone, they might... <laughs> now, look, Larry, um, at my home, I, I've got a bit of money. Uh, I don't keep anything here, you understand? Uh, why don't we just hop in my car and... Now, look, Larry, it's a lot more money you can get for just making a hit. I already it's... made a contract, Hilden. What you're suggesting is unethical. It's also bad thinking. If I don't get you, someone else is going to get both of us. I don't like you, Hilden. But I'd never make a hit in you with a brute's weapon like that. Oh, no. I'm going to send you out in style. 
Come on, Hilden. Mr. Hilden, Sergeant Randall is here. Tell him we're busy, and when we finish being busy, we're going out. I'm sorry, he's busy. I warned you, Randall, if I caught you outside your office, and I'd... Ah! If that's the way you want it, Hilden, we'll go down to the station. There'll be no need for that. You stay out of this, Madigan, or I'll have you down there, too. Come on. What was that all about? Randall's taking him in. Why? The same thing as yesterday? The union trouble? How did you know yesterday was about unions? What else? You, uh, you know what Hilden really does, don't you? <laughs> you see, uh, Randall's trying to put something onto him. It could be nasty. We'd better help. <laughs> well, how? Well, I'll stick around, and if they charge him, I'll raise the bail. <laughs> you mean you're not going away? I've got to look after your boss. <laughs> see him through this, and we'll shoot through for that holiday. Hmm? <laughs> well, how will we know what's happening to Mr. Hilden? Well, if they charge him, he'll ring you. And if they don't, he'll come back for his car, right? I suppose so. Look, I'll go home. You ring me from there. Well, can't you stay here? I've got things to do before I go away. Um, you ring me if anything happens. Tell Inspector Wilcox we're back. Sit down, Hilden. Right, what's it all about? I understand I'm to be charged with hitting you. Don't waste my time, Hilden. That was an act, and you know it. I might have be You wanted me to bring you in because there was something going on between you and Madigan. Now, what was it, Hilden? I might have be charged with assault. What a... was it, Hilden? I don't know what you're talking about. If you want to book me, book me. Take Hilden outside. Come on. What happened? I went to Hilden's office. Madigan was there. Hilden threw a punch at me. You didn't provoke him. It was an act. He wanted to get away from Madigan. He was scared, so I went along with it, thinking he might talk, but he didn't. It could be the other way around. He might have wanted to get you away from Madigan. No. No, don't be so sure. I'm going to turn him loose. We'll see how keen he is to go back to his office. Now, hold it. Assuming you're right, if Hilden wants protection, we've got to do something about it. Yes. Bring Mr. Hilden in. Sergeant Randall has told me what's happened. Yes, well, I don't like the way he barged into my office. But he seems to think there's more to it than that. Now, if you're in danger, we can protect you, but we'll need a reason. We haven't got men to waste. That means I can go now? Yes, I'll arrange for a car to take you to your office. Oh, no, no, uh, that won't be necessary. I don't want to put you to that trouble. Oh, it's no worry. Oh. Well, may I ring my office first? Use this phone. Thank you. Mr. Hilden's office. Oh, it's you. What's happened? I'll explain that later. Anyone waiting there to see me? I mean, uh, what appointments do I have this afternoon? No, there are no appointments here. And there's no one here to see you. Mr. Madigan's gone home. Are you coming back here? Yes, of course. Look, uh, ring the garage, ask him to fill my car up and bring her around, will you? Thank you, gentlemen. See Mr. Hilden back to his office. Yes, sir. You're right. He is scared. He didn't want to go back to his office. Madigan had another visit from his secretary before he went to the office. That could be interesting. You heard what he said about having his car refilled? I don't think he intends to hang about. Better put a tail on him, see where he goes. Uh, Gamble can do it. Get a message to him. Will you do that? I want to be there when Hilden leaves. It might give me that chance to get to his secretary alone. It might at that. All right, on your way. Where's your car? Outside. Why? Come with me. I've got to get somewhere in a hurry. Of putting a tail on him. To find out where he settles, in case we want to pick him up. We know where he lives. He's got a flat in East Sydney. He might not go there.
Now I've got to pick up some stuff at home and then maybe go on a business trip. If I'm not back in a week, I'll be in touch. Well, actually, I was thinking of taking a holiday, too. Now, well, why don't you do just that? Just shut the door and go. Thanks for everything. I'm sorry he isn't here. He might be away for at least a week. It could be longer. Yes, yes, I understand. Bye-bye. Can I help you? Oh. Mr. Hilden isn't here. I want to talk to you. What about? Lawrence Madigan, the man who's here today. Did he have an appointment? I don't know. Don't you keep a record? Mr. Hilden often made appointments without telling me. But you know Lawrence Madigan. Why should I? I only met the man once or twice. You knew him well enough to go to his house. Why did you go there? That's my business. It's also my business. It could be connected with murder. Communications. This is Sergeant Randall of the CIB. Will you relay any messages from Sergeant Sutton in the CIB car to 502356? Will do. Thank you. What did you say about murder? An American senator. Thorson. He had your boss deported. And because of that, you think Mr. Hilden killed him? Oh, you policemen are all the same. You've got narrow, one-track minds. You're speaking from experience, of course. Yes, I am. I've seen the way Mr. Hilden's been persecuted since he came back to this country. He's been accused of everything. And now it's murder. I didn't say he killed Senator Thorson. But he knows who did. Where does he keep his address book? It isn't here. Mr. Hilden took it away with him in his bag. All right, I'll ask you the question. Who was Bill Jamison? I think you better tell me the truth. Sergeant Randall. Message from Sergeant Sutton. Hilden's car is headed out of town. But tell Sergeant Sutton to stay with it and report back to me. Hold it. Can you keep this line open? No worries. Thank you. Well, your boss is going out of town. How do you know that? I've got two men following him. Oh, why don't you leave now, be him quiet, alone? Young woman. Sit down and listen. What does your boss call himself? He's a labor relations consultant. That's a cover. He's a criminal. So is Madigan, so is Bill Jamison, the man you say you don't know. I don't know him! Your boss had some trouble with Madigan, didn't he? That's why he's running out of town. I don't believe you. Mr. Hilden would have told me. He didn't tell you about his appointment with Madigan. He didn't tell you about Hilden either. Why are you so interested in Jamison? He killed Thorson. No. Sergeant Randall? Yes? Message from Sergeant Sutton. Hilden's car has gone to the grounds of a house in Vaucluse. That's Mr. Hilden's house. Tell Sergeant Sutton to call it off. Thank you. Over and out. Home, Jens. You know Bill Jamison, don't you? Is someone... a woman named Kelly mixed up in all this? Yes. Tell me. 
Larry Madigan used the name. I I heard him make a telephone call. Why didn't you tell me? We could have had him pulled in. He's gone to Mr. Hilden's house. What? I told him Mr. Hilden was going there. Communication. Message for Sergeant Sutton. He's to return to Hilden's house and arrest Madigan. Hello, Hilden. I don't, Larry. Oh, Larry. Don't, sorry. Now shoot. Lucky I wasn't expecting you. Larry said not to. I told him where Mr. Hilden had gone. He said he wanted to go there. He said... He said he, he wanted to look after him. Yes? Message for Sergeant Randall. Lawrence Madigan has been arrested for the murder of Max Hilden. Thank you. The American kept his promise. Holden Monaro by courtesy of General Motors Holden. <laughs>